on January 17th. No cases, no cases, no deaths. I'm supposed to close up the United States of America when I have no cases. You didn't close it down in the middle of March. Should you have closed it down earlier? I closed down question. from China. Excuse me. Should you have closed it down earlier? I closed down question. from China. Excuse me. So right now, don't worry about it. Be more concerned about influenza, which is going into a second peak for the season than coronavirus. If you haven't been watching the president's daily task force briefings, let me tell you, you're missing out. Not only are Trump and his team giving out legitimately good information, but Trump's also using it to call out the media's dishonesty and destroying them on live TV. So it's no mystery why the media wants to stop covering these briefings. Their childish behavior and partisan bias are on full display. During yesterday's briefing, Trump hilariously nailed the media with a video montage showing proof of his accomplishments accomplishments and the actions that he took during the response to the outbreak. He clearly triggered the Twitter mob that we know as the press corps because one after another lashed out at him. The best came from a CBS hack who looked like she was trying out for Acosta's role as the most obvious DNC operative. We'll get right back to discrediting the Democrat Party press corps and CNN, but first I have a very important message about your retirement from this video sponsor, Orion Metal Exchange. What will your savings in retirement look like? once we've declared victory over the virus. With stocks already down 30% from their all-time highs, no one has the answers. Did you know that it took nearly eight years for the markets to recover after the 2008 housing bubble crash? Yet during the crash of 2008, gold and silver surged to all-time highs. Do you really have eight years to wait for a recovery? Many Americans use this little-known IRS qualified loophole that allows Americans to buy gold and silver with their retirement accounts. And the good guys at Orion metal exchange offer a no fee transfer in as little as two days on most accounts. Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup all see gold soaring, forecasting $2,000 an ounce for gold. Some experts are calling for gold to double in the next year. Orion Metal Exchange is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer. At Orion, you get more precious metals for your money. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one-ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today. At Orion, you get more precious metals for your money every day. I saved tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of lives by hoodie. time that you bought, the argument is that you bought yourself some time and you didn't use it to prepare hospitals, you didn't use it to ramp up testing. Right you're now, so, you're so, you're so disgraceful. Are unemployed. It's so tens disgraceful the way you say that. Let, let me just, listen, dead. I How just went over it. I just went over in it. An unprecedented crisis. Nobody thought we should do it. And when I did it. But what did you do with the time that you bought? You know, the we month did. of February. That, you that know, video we did. Was a gap. What the do you do? Month of February. What do you do when you have no case in the whole United States? You had cases when in you, you, excuse me, you reported it. Zero cases, zero deaths on January 17th. January. February, the entire January, I said in January. Your video has a complete gap. On month January 30th. What did your administration do in February with the time that your travel ban bought A you? lot. What? A lot. So right now, don't worry about it. Be more concerned about influenza, which is going into a second peak for the season than coronavirus. Now, I'd like to go point by point discrediting all the questions that she was asking, but I'll just sum it up by saying that she's basically just a Twitter troll and not a legitimate reporter. Seriously, listening to them go back and forth was just like every embolism-inducing Twitter argument I've ever had with a left-winger. She berates Trump about the death toll and the unemployment numbers as if either of these things is Trump's doing. They attack him for the unemployment numbers, then they attack him when he says he wants to open the country back up. Literally, there's nothing that he can do. Per capita, America's death toll is astonishingly low compared to other countries. And we can now see that graphically thanks to this chart made by my friend American Joe. He's got a great channel, by the way. You should all go check it out when you're done here. But yeah, clearly it shows that we are on the low end of the death scale. That's why the media always uses the raw numbers when they talk about this, because it's all about undermining Trump. This CBS hack is just advancing the DNC narrative that if Trump had taken some sort of action earlier, then there would have been fewer deaths. Something Fauci himself has suggested is not a fair assumption because there's too many factors to account for. Sanjay Gupta said, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna 
move on. Gee, going based on what Jake Tapper said, Sanjay Gupta must be really credible. I wonder what he was saying about the coronavirus in January and February. Flu is a much bigger deal. There's an important context we need to keep this in, and that is that the flu is more deadly. Maybe this is a good opportunity to remind people of that. Such a good reminder. Half of the people in America do not get a flu shot, and the flu right now is far deadlier. So if you're freaked out at all about the coronavirus, you should be more concerned about the flu. Sanjay Gupta said that's this is all because we got started too late in the U.S. You know, it isn't as simple as that, uh, Jake. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, to just say this is all happening because we got started too late. But where we are right now is the result of a number of factors. The size of the country, the heterogeneity of the country. It's I think it's a little bit unfair to compare us to South Korea. <laughs> Why isn't the media showing that clip over and over? Could it be because they're propaganda? The fact here is that Trump is pushed up against a wall and constantly forced onto the defensive because our press corps are in the tank for a political party and they have an agenda. Trump is not perfect and he hasn't reacted perfectly to this outbreak, but then again, nobody has. As has been pointed out many times by many different people, the media, Democrats, and even Dr. Fauci himself were downplaying this outbreak up until the end of February. It's completely dishonest for this CBS hack, Paula Reed, to lob these accusations given what we know. But the media is clearly trying to rewrite history and repeat this lie often enough that people who aren't informed will just buy it. A sizable chunk of this country who don't know any better. Over at CNN, they straight up lost their minds, calling Trump's proof of media hypocrisy cherry-picked propaganda. That's right, showing video of the media's own words is propaganda. And someday, hopefully in five years when I'm not here, those papers are all going out of business because nobody's going to want to read them. But now they like them because they write about me. Now with that, I have a couple of interesting, we have a few uh, clips that we're just going to put up. We could turn the lights a little bit lower. I think you'll find them interesting. And then we'll answer some questions. I'll ask you some questions because you're so guilty, but forget it. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to get back onto the reason we're here, which is the success we're having. Okay? Uh, please, you could put it on. Thank you. People should be more concerned right now with the flu in this country. A lot of people are concerned about the coronavirus because they're hearing a lot of news about it right now. But the reality is, comparing it to the flu, for example, it's not even close to being at that stage. What if it is worse? Is this a moment where maybe countries put politics aside, a little bit of pride aside, and do we have U.S. officials? Should U.S. professionals such as yourself get involved? How worried should Americans be about coronavirus? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. That was President Trump uh, giving the latest update on the pandemic. The president was very angry. If you were watching that over the past hour and a half or so, trying to rewrite history regarding his response to coronavirus, uh, the president was extremely angry and uh, lashing out, frankly. Uh, At times, it bordered on dangerous. Uh, the president began with a propaganda video. That's what you call editorializing. She's projecting her opinion onto the moment. I didn't see a president lashing out. I saw a frustrated president dealing with a bunch of political activists and operatives who are pretending to be real media journalists. I don't have all the video, but King goes on to say this video that Trump showed is propaganda because it's cherry picked. Unbelievable. These are people who cherry pick quotes and video without also showing that the media, Democrats, and even Fauci himself were downplaying this outbreak and even comparing it to the flu up until the end of February. And talk about rewriting history. You all want people thinking the media and Democrats had this all figured out going back to January when we have plenty of video and written evidence to the contrary. I, and I have to tell you, that is the biggest meltdown I have ever seen from a president of the United States. I don't think a reasonable person could uh, watch uh, what we just saw over the last hour and conclude that the president is in control. No reasonable person could ever see it any differently than the media does. And gee, no reasonable person? Where have we heard that before? No reasonable prosecutor would bring this case. Both he and members of the conservative media were in this echo chamber saying to one another uh, that the public did not have to worry about this. So right now, don't worry about it. Be more concerned about influenza, which is going into a second peak for the season than coronavirus. Uh, but getting to your question, Aaron, I mean, I, I do think to some extent the president is realizing uh, that the walls are closing in on him. He's in, boys. He did it. He said it. There it is. 
The walls are closing in, everyone. It's all over. Just pack it all up. And there you have it, folks. This whole thing is just theater for them to use going into the 2020 election. It doesn't matter if Trump handles this whole situation masterfully or not. They're going to instigate these moments to use against Trump going into the election. However, I suspect that their plan will not have the desired effect. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And as always, if you want to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back. Oh,